Okay, now. Okay, so welcome to the meeting. Uh, this is March the 15th, meeting of the Local Agency Formation Commission. Um, prior to opening the meeting, I request that the executive officer provide instructions on in-person and video conference protocols. Executive Officer Knox. It, it is March 15th, which is the Ides of March. And if you ever read Julius Caesar, that's not a very good day. Right. Uh, right, right. So welcome to the, to the March meeting. Tonight we have a couple of firsts. Uh, this is the first com commission meeting with the new Brown Act requirements for hybrid in-person and video conference meetings. Uh, and with that, <laughs> we for the first time in three years, we have nine commissioners all in the same room together, which is pretty, pretty amazing. I'm glad to have you all here. Uh, and no sitting commissioners indicated they, they are going to attend remotely, so we don't have to go through that process tonight. Uh, it's also the first meeting on the third Wednesday of the month. That these changes were made to accommodate the city of Bakersfield's new meeting schedule and our newest commissioner, Andre Gonzalez. Uh, welcome to your first commission meeting. Yes. Um, since you are new, you might want to know how contentious issues have been uh, surrounding the city of Bakersfield ha have been in the past. City of Bakersfield was formed and later disincorporated by the Board of Supervisors in the 17, 7, 1700s. And in, 19, uh, in 1898, there was a vote to incorporate again. Uh, Mr. Rice has a um, news story, and I don't know if you can read that. It's pretty small. Uh, incorporation was passed by the Board of Supervisors by a three to one vote, but there was also apparently um, some precincts that voted uh, where it says at the bottom, nowhere rejoicing over the results. <laughs> uh, so with that, well, welcome to, to, uh, to LAFCO. Uh, your predecessors uh, representing the city of LAFCO have done a, a lot to regain confidence in the city over the last several years. Hopefully your time in the commission will be one of continued trust. So, so welcome. Uh, that's also an introduction to my sense of humor. Um, so we'll, we'll go with that. We're all still learning. Over yes. <laughs> uh, couple of notes. Um, if you're a representative from an agency or hear from the general public and wish to speak on an item before the commission, we ask that you use the microphone at the podium, allow the chair to recognize you, provide your name and any affili affiliation you may have, and speak into the microphone. We are recording these proceedings and want to make sure you are heard clearly both in the room and online. For those attending by video conference, if you are from an agency or the public, your microphone is muted until the chair recognizes you and the host unmutes your microphone. There will be an opportunity to speak on specific items on the agenda. Please use the raise hand function on Zoom to be recognized. The raise hand button is in different places depending on your version of the device you are using to participate. Mr. Rice is host, uh, is host and in charge of the Zoom portion of the meeting. If anyone gets disruptive, Mr. Rice has the authority to remove them from Zoom. When a commissioner makes a motion, please state your name and your motion. The chair will repeat the name and the motion uh, and the motion and all votes will be roll call votes uh, thank you for everyone for working with us mr rice please start the video and i turn it back to the chair to start recording the in progress thank you so much miss patty will you take the roll commissioner ayon present commissioner couch here commissioner crump here commissioner fowler here commissioner gonzalez here Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Sanders? Here. Commissioner Scrivener? Here. Commissioner Saragoza? Here. Roll call complete. Thank you so much. Let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and Commissioner Couch will lead us. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So I think we've already established that there are no commissioners on video conference. Correct. Because everyone is here. That's great. Um, this portion of the meeting is reserved for any requests from commissioner, commissioners 
to attend remotely. We don't have to do that. Um, Mr. Knox, do you have a report at this time? I do not. Okay. We can move down to the approval of the minutes. All righty. Good idea. Um, so we have minutes for the January 25th, 2023 meeting. Um, first off, is there any public comment on those minutes? Any commission comment or question? I'll move approval. Okay. okay. Motion by Supervisor Scrivener and a second by Couch. Do we have a roll call vote? vote? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. I just have a question for council. Since we don't have anyone remote, do we have to do a roll call vote or can it be a voice vote? It's up to you. Okay. Well, it's not up to me. I think it's up to, to the <laughs> chair. Legally, it's all right to have a uh, non roll call. Uh, non roll call? Yeah. Okay. All right. Then um, at the pleasure of the commission, then we will just resort or revert to having a voice vote. Uh, moving on to public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Is there anyone interested in speaking? I hear none. Um, we are moving the audit agenda item to the beginning of the agenda, essentially, um, at the request of the executive officer, the audit is being moved up to the beginning of the meeting so that the auditor and our accountant don't have to wait around. Mr. Knox. Yes. Uh, the, the, the audit for 2021-22 fiscal year has been completed. We came in under budget with no major issues. The item was originally on the January agenda and was continued due to some changes requested that did not get resolved before the agenda packet went out in January. The audit this year was again provided by the accounting firm of Brown Armstrong, Thomas Young, as replaced Rosalba Flores as our lead auditor, and is here tonight to provide some color to the audit. And thankfully, none of that color is red. No, hopefully not. Yes. Hopefully, yes, uh, hopefully everyone had a chance to review the financial statements. Uh, my name is Thomas Young with Brown Armstrong County Corporation, and I'm here to present the results of the June 30, 2022 audits. Uh, very quickly, the purpose of an audit is to obtain an independent third party, in this case, Brown Armstrong. Uh, we came in and we analyzed the financial statements, which are the representation of your management. Management spent a lot of time putting together their, their numbers, and our job is to issue an opinion or render an opinion as to the fair statement of those numbers. We do that by performing tests of transactions. We obtain third-party confirmations. Essentially, we do a lot of work to make sure that these numbers are fairly stated. I'm pleased to present that on page two, we've issued our audit report, and we have issued an unmodified or clean opinion that is the highest form of assurance that we can render. In addition to that audit report, we've issued a report on page 33, which is a report on the internal controls of uh, the formation and um, again no issues there there was no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses so management should be congratulated um, there was one other report we issued was agreed upon procedures and this was a similar finding the last year it's due to your online purchases and electronic expenditures um, we just they we just the agency just needs to implement a policy to, to ensure that um, they obtain pre-approval for all online purchases and then maintain the receipts so that you can review them. Other than that, there was no issues. Um, everything was clean. So with that, I'd uh, open it up to any questions that you might have regarding uh, the financial statements or anything else. Commissioners, does anyone have any questions or comments? Um, quick question. Are you saying there is no online pre-approval procedure 
in place? I think the policy just needs to be developed. Oh. And so um, it was a finding from the previous years, and I think it, Blair is probably going to take care of it this year for sure. Yeah. Uh, but you saw there was uh, – You did have the approval eventually. We did see that the, the receipts were approved by you. So you had, a, you yeah. had the receipts? Yes, oh, yes. I mean, you could see the receipts. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. So I, I would tell Pat, Patty, we're out of paper towels, and she would order some online. And so when I do, do that, there's no record of me approving that she should be paying those online. So when we do that now, I always have a written approval of those items before she, or, she orders anything. That, that's, the, that's the issue. Um, there's nothing major to it. It's just making sure we have a, a record of what we've done. Again, it's just good practice to make sure that you know, that you don't purchase anything that's unauthorized or unnecessary. Okay, so I believe <clears throat> with that, this is a receive and file item. Is there anything else, Mr. Knox? As a receive and file, there isn't a recommendation and there's not a vote required. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Good evening. Have a good evening. Okay, moving forward on the agenda, the next is a determination proceeding. Um, this is for the City of Bakersfield, annexation number 708, Rosedale number 15, CSA 71, detachment U. This proposal is to annex approximately 4.20 acres of vacant land located on the south side of Rosedale Highway, generally between Parker Lane and Gibson Street. The APN number is 332-230-01. This annexation was initiated by the city for the purchase for the purpose of future growth of the city. This propo proposal has 100% landowner consent. Uh, the CEQA notice of exemption has been filed. So, yes, uh, as stated, this is 4.2 acres of vacant land on Rosedale Highway. Uh, surrounding properties are commercial, industrial, and vacant land. There'll be no tax increase involved with this. Uh, the zoning is service industrial and will remain service industrial. It's consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plans, and specific plans. There's no ag land conversion. It's consistent with commission policies and conforms to the assessor's parcels. Uh, there has been an indemnification agreement signed by the, the, the city. Uh, there is a functional overlap with CSA 74, 71, uh, therefore, CSA 71 will be detached. Uh, since there is no development currently planned, there is no change in water supply uh, or, or need for additional water supply at this time, and CEQA is handled by a notice of exemption. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. The annexation has 100% landowner consent. The city has requested that notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. It is recommended that the commission consider the environmental docu document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1810, Rosedale number 15, and detach from CSA 71, and that's uh, detachment U. Okay. Is there any public comment on this matter? Hearing none, uh, commissioners, any comments or questions? Um, I had a question. The current uh, development has a septic tank hookup. Is that one or two or multiple? And the question I have was, is the city going to then provide a sewer, closed line sewer service at some point? Would that be the expense of the city or the expense of the owner? Question number one. You're on. Excellent. Uh, question number one, uh, is there septic tanks on the site? Uh, the answer would be no. There, are no. there are no septic tanks on site at this time. Question number two, as it relates to connection to sewer, the city does um, have specific policies in place as it relates to sewer connections and fees may be assessed. I don't know the exact number of what those fees are. Um, the applicant can property. Pardon me, the property owner can continue with the site in its present form. 
until such time as there's a request for, for utility, it's at that time that uh, sewer assessment fees will be made. Thank you. Madam Chairman. Yes. I move acceptance of annexation 708 and CSA 71 detachment U. Thank you. Fowler. We have a uh, motion by Commissioner Fowler and a second by Commissioner Couch to accept this. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Madam Chair, the clerk will have to announce the vote. Motion passed. Thank you. Unanimously. Unanimously. Unanimous, unanimously <laughs> motion passed okay moving on to um, item 7 notice of public hearings um, this is regarding the preliminary budget for 2023-2024 uh, consideration of the 2023-2024 proposed preliminary budget the budget for Kern LAFCO is determined by the Commission and funded by the County of Kern the incorporated cities in Kern County and the independent like, uh, special districts car. that That's Kern Lafco is designated as a principal county. With each category of agency paying one third of the budget per government code section 56381B1A, a proposed budget is required to be adopted prior to the final budget being considered per government code section 56381A. Mr. Knox. Yes. Mr. Rice says that I'm too passive in pre presenting the budget each year. Uh, asking for money has never been something I'm comfortable with doing, uh, but this is the most aggressive budget I've, I've brought to you so far, so here goes. Uh, let's start with where revenue comes from. Revenue starts comes from two sources, fees and the yearly assessment. For those who are new, Cal LAFCO fees are significantly less than the actual costs. The issue with fees is that there is such a wide range of proceedings and fees collected in, in a year, it would be difficult to budget without having a very large reserve to make, make the budget work. With this in mind, fees are kept low and the difference is made up with the yearly assessment and the assessment is paid a third by the county, cities, and special districts. Uh, that's the revenue side. The expense is a little more difficult. Salaries are within the normal five to four to five percent increase that we've seen every year. Unfund liability went down slightly. This is due to the efforts to pay down more of the unfund liability used using a portion of the carryover at the end of the year. State retirement has, ridden, has risen for the first time in several years. Employee group insurance is significantly higher. It, should, it actually should have been higher last year, but I mistakenly did not account for a third full-time employee. This item has to do with the health, re, health reimbursement agreements that the Commission has with the employees. Uh, the full amount of those uh, health reimbursements uh, does not typically get, get used up in every year, but we still have to account for them within our budget. Um, one of the, on the service and supply side of the budget, there are small increases in general liability insurance and membership. I do not have a recommendation to rejoin CalAFCO at this time, uh, so membership will remain basically the same. Office expenses will remain the same. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, with office expense, uh, we will not have a GASPI adjust adjustment like we saw on the previous version of the audit that showed $123,000 yeah, $123, spent in, in, in office expense, which kind of freaked me out when I saw that. And that's one of the reasons I went back to him and said, hey, we need to work on this because they're going to think I spent $123,000 on pencils and, and paper or something. So we were able to get that worked out. The big item is the professional and specialized services. There are multiple, multiple reasons for an increase in this amount. The category has historically been budgeted as significantly higher than the actual cost to account for any unforeseen legal issues and to pay for studies and reports. In order to keep costs down, I have not significantly changed this amount over the years with less and less margin every year. The cost of professional services is going up. Uh, a monthly IT contract has been added in the last year. The staff is working on plans to have our own website 
and we will be sending out an RFP soon that will further clarify the costs uh, of, a, of a website. Uh, legal and HR services uh, costs continue to rise as, uh, rise as well. I have shared with the Commission my view that our next steps as a Commission are to focus on agencies that are struggling to operate and those who are not in compliance with report, reporting requirements. To ad address these issues may require additional steps. This might show up as fees for non-compliance. Uh, legal action uh, is an option. An impossible reorganiz reorganization or dissolution of a district is another. Legal work or studies that, have, that staff do not have the time or, or expertise to write are a possibility and would have to be, doing, be, be accomplished by an outside source. So we'd hire a, a contractor to do that. Before we get too far down the road, please keep in mind that any expenditures of, of size will be brought before the commission for approval. Uh, the funds will not be spent without the commi commission's knowledge. Under re rents and leases, we have a marginal increase as this is the fourth year of our five-year lease. And that was, there's a step up in every year that we approved four years ago. Um, special department expense, um, this is one that's always tricky. I believe it covers the cost of the assessor, assessor, surveyor, auditor, and board of equalization. When LAFCO is the lead agency, these costs are paid by LAFCO and then are passed along to the applicant for reimbursement. Uh, the reimbursement shows up as revenues in, in the fees category and, and is not offset in this, but we still have to show that we paid this out. So there, there's a, whatever shows up in this category eventually gets reimbursed in, in fees. Transportation and travel and personal vehicle miles, I raise these categories a little to reflect the current cost of travel and the potential for commissioners and staff to attend more conferences. It is my recommendation to accept the preliminary 2023-24 budget with input for final budget to be brought back at the next commission meeting. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Is there any public comment on the preliminary budget? Seeing none, commissioners, do you have any comments or questions about the preliminary budget? I, is this now, after, after tonight, you're going to send this out to all the member agencies? All the member agencies, they, they, they have already seen it, but we will send it out again after you give me your input. We, I will put together another one and send it out before the next meeting. I may have missed it. Did you get any response from them the first time around? The response we got was the last category, which is the actual draft budget, was not on the, f the first page. And so we had to send it out a second time. <laughs> Nothing about the numbers, no. Madam Chairman. Okay. Yes. I have a quick question. Did I understand you to say that our fees are lower than our costs? Yes. Generally um, speaking. I, I did, when we last did our an increase in our fee schedule. Mm -hmm. I did a quick um, cal calculation and it came up to about $14,000 per proceeding as what it would cost if we just cost it out mm -hmm. in each one. Some of them are, are less than that and we have some that you know take months and years to get through and are consider considerably more. Um, so it's an average. Mm -hmm. uh, but our fees are $1,200. Uh, plus another five for um, a sphere of influence change, and, and there's additional ones that are added on. So we do keep it pretty low. How do ours compare with other comparable LAFCOs? We are the lowest in the state. Okay. Even after we, we basically doubled them when we did our last fee, fee increase. And well, when was that done? I think three years ago. Is that about right? Thank you. Yeah. Madam Chairman. Go ahead. Quick question on the, uh, uh, I think it's called professional and special services. Yes. The line item. Um, I, I believe the increase is, is needed based on what I'm, I've been told. And um, um, one of the things I was going to ask you was, um, in order to increase revenue, sometimes there has to be an opportunity to look outside 
the fees and assessments such as grants. Therefore, if there was eligible grants that would allow us to be more uh, efficient and or expand our, our services, would that come out of this funding source or do we need to add to that? Or would it be done in-house as far as grant development? So we have done grants in the past and one was specific to a dissolution of a district and so it covered the, the fees and cost of doing that. Uh, the second was the CARES Act funds we received from the county <laughs> via federal government that covered um, losses we had due to COVID. Uh, but there was other items in there that allowed us to um, expense for um, working remotely, which allowed us to put our server in that category. And we were able to have the federal government basically pay for a server for us for the but first time. Be more specific, were they competitive grants? And if so, were they done in-house or did you contract out? Uh, both of them were done in-house. So we have capability to do in-house grants if needed in the future. Depends on how complicated they are. If they're very complicated, then you would recommend contracting out? Yes. And would it come out of this line item? Yes. Just want to verify if that's sufficient funds in the future. I just pointed that out right now. Thank you for that explanation. Another item I, I actually didn't put in my notes, um, for the last several years, we've taken 25% of the carryover, what's left at the end of the year, and applied it to the unfunded liability that we have with CalPERS. We've been doing that 25%. We have been able to lower our, our total unfunded liability sum, but not a, a great amount. Uh, there is a possibility, if you're interested, we can go from 25% of the carryover to 50%. So, so just so you're aware of what the carryover is, we have money at the end of the year. If we have an $800,000 budget, instead of charging them $800,000, we reduce the amount uh, that we have left over, and that's what they pay. You're looking at me like I didn't explain it well. <laughs> the, the city, special districts, and, and the county. The, the assessment drops by the amount that we have left over from the previous year. So that's who they are. That's who they are, that, yes. That was the reason for the uh, okay. confusion. Okay. Any other uh, commissioner questions or comments? I have a couple questions. Sure. Uh, just a couple questions. One minor question, first of all. Did I hear you say that we're no longer a member of CalAFCO? And is that correct? That's correct. And why not? There's a couple reasons. Um, I guess two years ago, they raised the, the they restructured the due structure. Uh, it's supposed to be done by population, and they stuck us in the same category as Los Angeles, even though we're 8% of the population of Los Angeles, which tripled the cost of our membership. Um, I also got to the point where I felt like um, the board of Cal LAFCO treated the region, the local LAFCOs as if they were employees instead of them serving us, we were there to serve them. Mm -hmm. And I was not happy with that. We still um, are in contact with Cal LAFCO. We had some go to uh, the conference this last year, uh, we, I, I believe the, d the dues is like 12000 a year, and we pay an additional, I think, 150 bucks a person over as being a non-member to attend their conferences. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for three people, you know, that's 450 bucks versus 10000 I think we're still doing pretty well. Okay. Yeah. And, and then the, the second question I had is you, you mentioned just a moment ago the unfunded liability and some of the decisions made to pay that down or to attempt to pay that down. We know that we may pay it down this year, but in future years that, you know, uh, factors beyond our control may increase that unfunded liability. So I'm wondering, is that a strategic decision made by this body? Uh, was there a decision in the committee? Help me as a newbie understand where, where we're making those strategic uh, decisions and making a pathway ahead to, to address the unfunded liability it, it was a strategy that I brought to this Commission okay um, and after seeing multiple years where our unfunded liability would continue to go up even though we were paying the base amount mm -hmm. um, and 
they liked the idea and and approved it. And so we just, for the last, I believe, three years have been going at 25%. Uh, and we have seen a, a, two reasons for a drop. Last year, um, CalPERS had a really great year, but this year they're gonna have a terrible year. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So for me to, to say, you know, it, it bounces around so much from year to year, it's hard to keep track of w whether we're actually making progress or not. Um, so by do the overall trend is our unfunded liability was going up with without paying some additional amount to it. Okay, I don't want to belabor the point. I would like us to look at perhaps a Section One Fifteen trust fund as an alternative strategy, um, so that we can you know, buttress the effects of future Calpers underperformance. I'll be happy to work on, Th with you on that. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> So is that a budget committee referral? I'll make it sure. All right. Thank yes, you. sir. Question, one last question on the spreadsheet. First of all, I like it that everything's on one page. <laughs> my iPad can only do one pad on my page, <laughs> and I can barely see it, but it, it's cool, so I, can, I don't have to switch screens. For clarification, on the bottom, those numbers regarding reserve, sick, and uh, vacation line items, They've already been calculated or accounted for, or are you just breaking them out to let us know the line item balances? So th this goes back a ways. Um, there was an executive officer, two executive officers ago, that had a significant amount of sick and vacation time that was unused when he retired. Uh, and the commission had not accounted for that, <laughs> and so it was like, I don't know the real number, but it was a s significant enough that it affected the budget. Um, so they decided to account for the, that, those dollars in our reserve. So our reserve is 10% of our budget plus whatever leftover sick and vacation time uh, the three of us have not used. So that, that's how we calculate that. It's, so it's a running balance. We know each time the budget's approved what yes. those balances are. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Chair, quick comment in response to um, what was brought up earlier. I think another reason you are being polite that we opted out of CalAFCO is didn't we feel like they were advocating policies that absolutely didn't make any sense for Kern County and they weren't listening? They were not listening, that is correct. Okay. Um, yeah, they, they're they still doing some of that. I'll get to that a little bit later. In the legislative report, I'll, I'll speak to that. Yes, um, Blair, would you mind explaining how you compensate for lack of membership in that organization? Yes, um, we are a member of the California Special Districts Association. We actually get our insurance through SDRMA, which is a subsidiary of CSDA. That's a lot of acronyms, but um, Special District uh, Risk Management Association is what SDRMA stands for. Uh, so, so we get that, being a, only three employees, if we were at, went out on the open market to try to get insurance, it would be significantly higher. And I believe it's like $2,000 to be a member of them. It, what we save on insurance more than pays for that. I actually sit on the CSDA Legislative Committee, so I get to see all the bills that they're working on. Um, which is very helpful, both because they, whenever there's a, a LAFCO related bill, they're on top of it because it, it affects special districts. But I also get to see what special districts ha have to struggle with and some of the bills that they're dealing with. So it gives me a broader perspective. Um, I'm the only LAFCO executive officer in there. So when an, off when an issue comes up, they look at me and so our voice gets heard very loudly within, the, within them. So that's, that's, that's helpful. Any other commissioner questions or comments? Could I have a motion to approve the preliminary budget? I move to approve, McKibben. Second, couch. Okay, we have a motion by uh, Commissioner McKibben to approve the preliminary budget and a second by Commissioner Couch. I have a question, since this is m money related, do we need to have a roll call vote? No, no? okay. Um, all in favor? 
Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ms. Patty? Motion the passed unanimously. Go ahead. Thank you. Moving forward, um, we have a City of Bakersfield Municipal Services Review. Um, the Municipal Service Review updated the City of Bakersfield's current sphere of influence boundary in order to prepare and to update spheres of influence in accordance with GC Section 56425. The Commission shall conduct a service review of the, of the municipal services provided in the county or other appropriate area designated by the Commission. Commission I mean, uh, <laughs> Mr. Knox. Yes. As the largest city, Bakersfield's is the most complicated of municipal service reviews. I would like to thank city staff and their consultant, Quad Knopf, for their efforts in developing this document. We asked a lot and they delivered. This document outlines how services are provided within the sphere of influence of the city and details the steps that, need, that the city needs to continue to grow. In this case, growth does not mean just new construction, but potentially taking on additional urbanized unincorporated areas. The findings of the MSR are written as determined uh, as required in, by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act and there are seven areas. Growth in population, the location and character of any disadvantaged unincorpor unincorporated community, the present and planned capacity of public facilities, uh, financial ability of agencies to provide services, status of and opportunities for shared facilities, ac accountability for community service needs, including government structures and operational efficiencies, and any other matter related to effective and efficient service delivery as required by commission policy. In all, there are 95 determinations within this municipal service review, and I'm not gonna go through all of them. Uh, but if there is one that you have a specific question about uh, Blafco staff and city staff and, and the writers of, of the municipal service re review are here to answer those. Um, neither the city nor Lafco staff are, re are re recommending a sphere of influence amendment at this time. This document focuses on services provided in this current sphere of influence uh, uh, and their metro boundary with an eye on areas where future development and annexation of unincorporated areas are possible. There's one correction that needs to be made on determination number seven, there are three areas to focus, areas of focus related to the efficiency, effective or efficient uh, service delivery. In the 7A, um, de de determination two, uh, the Metro Bakersfield area consists of significant portions of undeveloped, un unincorporated, urbanized, residential areas within basics without basic services or amenities such as sewers street lights curb gutter curbs gutters and sidewalks there's also a significant of urbanized and it should say unincorporated areas with substandard and takeout services regarding as just says services such as public safety city of bakersfield uh, coordinated with the county the city of bakersfield coordination with the county of Kern should identify unincorporated areas that would be better served by inclusion in the city. As this is as this is a LAFCO document, this is a receive and file and does not require a vote. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioners, do you have any questions or comments? I do. Um, this was a very lengthy document and lots of uh, legal lease and kind of complicated uh, language uh, and we only have access to it uh, from 11 o'clock because the Dropbox link was not working and I would really like to have a physical copy of this document. I hope the city wouldn't mind providing that to all of the commissioners. And I can do that as well. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Moving on to commission items, there are none. Uh, general business, um, approval of monthly expense list number 23-01. Mr. Knox. I, I do have a comment. Uh, even though the commission has not met for in two months, there is only one accounts available and that's for January. The change of date to the third Wednesday of the month means that the agenda packet goes out before AP is finished for February. 
so in future months, it'll actually be a month behind. Um, so you won't see it at the, at the next meeting. It'll be another month later. Um, part of what we've been doing is when we do have checks signed, we have the person signing them sign the bottom of the page, and we send that to the chair. So both the signer and the chair have seen what we have spent. So we're not operating in a vacuum, and you, you not seeing as there are commissioners who are seeing this information, uh, even if the full commission is not, uh, until the next meeting that what we have it available for for you. So, and that's all due to the uh, meeting date change. Right. Right. We we pay bills on the tenth, and our meetings are now on the fifteenth. <laughs> Commissioner Fowler. Yes, I wonder if we could have Rebecca Moore's name taken off our bank statement. We tried that once. <laughs> I'm gonna try it again. The bank statements actually go through the county, and so we will we will look at that again. Okay. It's actually it was a bit of a joke when she came back. <laughs> it was still there. <laughs> okay. So any further questions or comments? No. We need a motion to approve the uh, monthly expense list. Motion. Second. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Scrivener and a second by uh, Commissioner Couch to approve the uh, monthly expense list. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ms. Patty? Motion passed unanimously. Okay. Um, we have an executive officer report regarding 2023-2024 state legislation. Yes, uh, the deadline for state legis uh, legislature to introduce new bills ended in mid-February. The list of bills in your packet are those that directly affect LAFCO or affected agencies uh, that, that LAFCO is involved with. I would not go through each bill tonight. There will be significant changes to these bills before they become a law, um, just so you're aware of what's coming our way. Just because there's a February deadline does not mean that there will not be new bills in the future. Uh, there are ways around the process if you know how Sacramento works. Uh, you can introduce new bills or gut and amend a bill up until really the last day of the session. Um, so it's, it's yeah. Um, one bill we are expecting to see is from CalAFCO that has to do with indemnification agreements in relation to legal action brought by the applicant. Uh, for those who've been here a while, you might remember there was a case in San Luis Obispo County where the agreement not only requested indemnification from a third party, but also from the applicant themselves. That was taken to the court, and the court ruled that that was not a, a legal way of, of doing an indemnification agreement. Our agreement is just for third parties. So the applicant, we can't say the applicant um, did, something, did something wrong and then have to pay for it themselves. Um, so we, we can't sue the applicant. <laughs> or the applicant can't sue us, and then we require them to pay the legal fees to sue us. That's probably the better way of putting that. Um, uh, this is, you know, the bill is an attempt to bypass the legal process, uh, which rarely happens. The legislature typically doesn't by, you know, try to bypass the courts by, by passing bills. Uh, CSDA is sponsoring a bill to modify, modify the Brown Act to, to be more flexible concerning the use of video conferences for meetings. Uh, there is a disconnect between what the legis legisla legislature experiences using video conferences during COVID and what local agencies has, have experienced. At the state level, They'd have a, st a meeting and crazies would get on and take hours of time giving testimony, uh, which would just slow down the process and was not useful. And so that, that's their experience, where our experience is we're actually getting better, um, not just us specifically, but special districts and, and other local agencies are getting better um, access for folks that can't make it to, to meetings. Um, and allows commissioners like ours to be in remote places. Uh, if we had a bad storm today and 58 and 178 was were closed, our chair would, would not be able to be here. 
Um, so there were things like that 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 um, you know are, are helpful if, if we get those changed within uh, the process instead of having the emergency and just cause uh, provisions that that uh, Mr. Schroeder went through at the last meeting. So, um, and this is just um, informational. Um, so if there's any questions you have on specific bills, I, I can kind of go through them, but they're, they're gonna change quickly. That's kind of the, the way the process works. Commissioners, any questions or comments regarding that? No? Okay, um, we, then we have executive officer miscellaneous items, Mr. Knox. And I have four. At the January meeting, I mentioned the Lamont Stormwater Dis District does not appear to be active. Luckily, with the recent rains, we have had we have not had major flooding in Lamont. At this point, it is clear that the district has not actively engaged in, in providing the service for which they are tasked. They have not held a meeting in recent years and not conducted any financial audits. The district owns equipment that has been sitting in their Lamont Utility District equipment yard. According to, to the Utility District General Manager, that equipment hasn't moved in up to seven years. They have also not responded to multiple inquiries from LAFCO staff. We can't find them. Um, may the, any of the board members that were, we've had trouble, we, we haven't been able to find them. So there is a process for dissolving or reorganizing a district depending on the status of the district, whether the services provided are still needed and, possible, and whether there's a possible successor agency. The districts we have dissolved to date were inactive and met the criteria for the streamlined process. And I've already began to put together evidence that will go towards a study that will determine which process is appropriate in regards to the stormwater district. When I have enough information, I will come back to the commission with a more de definitive path going forward. Last month, we didn't meet as a commission, but the policy committee met at the same time uh, that we normally have a meeting. Uh, and we had a lively discussion over several items. There were no actionable items uh, back to the commission as I did not request any. Uh, the committee directed the executive officer to bring back language to be added to the standards, policies, and procedures to address noncompliance of five-year sphere of influence review uh, questionnaires, municipal service reviews, and address deficient and inefficient agencies. It's going to take me a while to bring forward language to the policy committee. Once language is agreed upon, a recommendation will, will be made back to the commission for consideration. I should also note that there was discussion about the definition of substan substantially surrounded. This is an issue the city of Bakersfield has requested clarification on over the years. At the meeting, Assistant C City Manager Hallen indicated that there are, aren't many areas left in Metro Bakersfield that would benefit from a definition because most areas are larger than the 150 acres. And Mr. Helen can correct me if any of this is wrong, uh, to use the streamlined process under government code section 56375.3. As such, there does not appear to be any momentum to address the def definition at this time. Uh, during the budget, I mentioned the health reimbursement uh, accounts for each employee. For years, we have used our former bookkeeper, Juliet Granger, to ver verify the reimbursable items. She has asked several times over the last six years whether we have found someone else to replace her because she would like to be fully retired. And unfortunately, I have not been able to find someone. And something is t telling me that it's time <laughs> to really find that replacement. Um, and I could use some help with that. It's a couple of hours here and there for someone who wants to earn a little extra spending money. We can provide training, which is not difficult. If you know someone who would, might be interested, let me know and we can come up with a plan to, to see if uh, they would be a good fit to, 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 to do that process for us. Uh, last year, we didn't pay them, we paid them less than $600. I know that because we didn't have to do a 1099 on them. Um, so it's not a lot of money, it's not a lot of time, but we need someone to do that. If we hired like an accounting firm to do that, it would be you know thousands of dollars for really not much work to do. Yes? Do you need a CPA or a bookkeeper? No. What uh, talents are required? 
there there is a list of what items can be reimbursed and they have to check what we give them versus that and also make sure that the invoices match uh, what we're asking those are the two requirements as long as what we ask for is on that list and you know we're good but if something is not they can throw it out and say that's not a reimbursable item and you're not going to get reimbursed for that so it's very simple oh I have one last thing the next meeting is scheduled for April 19th uh, we will not have any annexations ready for that meeting although we are working on several uh, it is important that meeting because we will need to finalize the budget for next year so with that um, my report is done thank you very much um, we have no closed session are there any other questions or comments by the commissioners I have a question if we're not so we're gonna meet just to finalize the budget in April currently I do not have another item for that meeting no so but we we don't have to have the budget approved until when June June 15th our June our June meeting would actually be after the 15th it's like the 18th or 19th we could do it in May that's what I'm going to suggest <laughs> What, what, I don't know if there's a if there's a reason you want to have an extra month or not but if the Commission looks at the final budget and says this isn't what we want to do that gives us an extra month to come back and fix it so we will have to fix it on the spot in May if if there are issues that that come up the odds of that happening I think are low I don't think I don't remember that ever happening and I've been here for a few years Right. I'll, I'll roll the dice on that one. If you want to skip April and just go to May. Okay. It's okay with me. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let the commission know within the next week whether we have any other items that come up. Um, otherwise, I'm happy so, to go with. And, I'm, so, I'm sorry. And, and in an emergency, if if it did happen, we could always move the June meeting up a few, you know, a few days as well. We could we could have a special meeting. Yeah, yes. So, okay. I'm I'm with the uh, couch on this one. <laughs> this time. <laughs> I, what, what did you eat today? So, <laughs> can I just throw out a question? It has to do with emergency meetings. Do we have a policy? Am I on? I can't tell if I'm on. Screen light. If if there, if we're in between meetings and um, something comes up that's urgent, I don't know what that could be. I know some Africans have a policy where the uh, executive officer needs to make a decision and needs to meet with at least one if not two commissioners like the chair vice chair we would then have a procedure in place or a resolution saying you can go ahead and do that and get that done maybe it's a letter that has to go to the governor on some particular issue I don't know and it's uh, done prior to any board meeting or commission meeting and then we can go back to the commission and, and say this is what we did because we have the authority to do it any kind of emergency powers like that written Th there are two that I can think of off the top of my head could you let us know what they are I'm just curious yes the first is if there is a, a situation where a agency has to provide services outside their boundary for emergency purposes uh, they can come to me and I can approve it within you know almost immediately to 24 hours waiting for you know the next Commission meeting for an emergency um, doesn't work in the middle of an emergency in this case if something came to me tomorrow we're not gonna have another meeting till May so you the Commission has given me authority to say yes that is an emergency they can provide services outside their boundary um, there was a second and I've lost it can, can you give me your question again a little bit <laughs> I'm not sure I can repeat it, but if the <laughs> <laughs> is there a generic emergency procedure in place written that allows you, because you're the executive officer, to meet with maybe one or two commissioners to meet that need, which may require a written letter or written something, approving that action so that 
we don't miss the opportunity because it is an emergency, but then you would come back later and let the uh, commission know, oh, this is what we did because we had the authority to do it. Yes, the, the, second, the second item is uh, if there's legislation that we are requested to uh, send a letter on, okay. uh, a lot of times that legislation is moving very quickly and we need to do it before a commission meeting. In that case, uh, just like the, the extent, extension of service and emergency, uh, I have the authority to do that and on both of them, I informed the chair of what my actions were. You, and you if inform the chair after you do it, or do you inform the chair that you're going to do it and you ask for her opinion, or his opinion? It's afterwards. Okay, just wanted to know how that worked. Uh, so that's a written procedure or something? Yes. Okay, just thank you for that clarification. Okay, I, I, I have a question. Okay. And this was brought to my attention by Commissioner Fowler. Um, since Commissioner Gonzalez suggested that we look into a Section 115 trust fund for the um, CalPERS unfunded, unfunded liabilities, liability. yes. um, does the Budget Committee need to meet? I don't even know what that is, what that trust fund is or Fair how enough. it operates. Fair enough. Neither do I. Right. But Commissioner Gonzalez does. <laughs> well, I guess the bigger question is, you know, what is really our strategy to address the unfunded liability long term? And I, I, I like to know just sort of more globally what the strategy is. So perhaps you can come back and uh, provide that to the, to the whole body and we can move from there. Okay. So. Okay. So we will not be having a budget committee meeting to address that. I will have a report back to the Perfect. full commission at the May meeting of what that looks, what a, that trust looks like. Perfect. So it seems like we pretty much decided we don't want to meet again until May. I, I'm reserving, give me a week just to make sure nothing comes up that we have to. So in, in that, but in I, that will let, I will let you know. Okay. In that regard, all the same, uh, what would the, the May meeting date be? May 19th, 17th. May 17th. So if there is no further business to discuss, um, then we will adjourn the meeting to meet again either April the 19th or May 17th, depending on what Mr. Knox comes back with. Yep. Have a nice evening. Thank you.